my career as a broadcaster. Um, my voice is very important to me. We confirmed his cancer, and it's stage four. As far as I knew, st stage four was as serious as it come. Across Trey's pass, Bingo! It's in the net. The tumor was right next to my vocal cords, and they said just a, a slight error uh, would change my voice drastically. He scored! What a pass! And bang in the net! And uh, I, I knew right then and there that that was probably the bottom. So I was uh, sitting in the pool one night, and I kind of reached up to my throat and went, and I felt a bump on the side, you know, and it was a, a rather large lump. So when I got back home, I went to a uh, ear, nose, and throat specialist almost immediately after he put a camera uh, down my nasal passage into my throat. He said, there's a tumor there. When Dr. Hennessy said the words cancer, um, I asked him to repeat it. You said, pardon? That's when life changed almost immediately. He said, there's one person that I know that's the best at head and neck cancer in the entire world. It's a little bit f further than the local hospitals, but it's the best place I can send you. And that was to Henry Ford. Al was specifically referred to me to be evaluated for sort of the most contemporary options for the treatment of his cancer. Something that you and I as a, a normal average person not notice, but as a broadcaster who is very particular with how his inflection and his tone is with everything that he says, he would probably notice a difference. And so with that in mind, I wanted to be very careful about what treatment options I recommended to him. Originally, they were going to go in and do surgery, but then they had to consider my livelihood and how they wanted to return me to normal. That's when they said, we're going to put you on a little bit different path of going with uh, chemo therapy and 35 radiation treatments. I think either option, transural robotic surgery or concurrent chemo radiation would have been sufficient to cure the cancer. What I was really focused on was making sure that after the cancer treatment was done that he returned to the best quality of life as possible. They told me they could kill it. And so I knew at that point that I had to do everything in my power to make sure that that happened. And so I tried to remain positive the whole time. And it's tough, very tough. Toughest thing I've ever done. But I never gave up because I kept getting encouragement from my friends in my life. They, they, they got me through this. Could I have done it by myself? No. Cindy was great through this whole thing. Not only my wife, but a good friend of mine, Jim Karshner, who set up a, a, like a ride share system among my friends. These are the guys that took time off of their job, their work, to make sure that I got back and forth to Henry Ford, 101 miles one way, and back home for my radiation treatments every day for seven weeks. Um, about a year ago, I signed up with the American Cancer Society, and I became a volunteer driver. And you'd be surprised of the satisfaction that you get as a person that you're helping somebody get to their cancer treatments, just like somebody helped you. Because you have cancer today, doesn't mean your life has ended. In a lot of ways, your life just starts. You start looking at yourself and your family and your friends a whole lot differently. You appreciate things that before you took for granted. And I know for a fact that I will never take friends or family or life or work for granted again. Much like a hockey game, you need to take on cancer with the same mindset. You're not always gonna score that goal. Sometimes you're gonna bring one off the post. You're gonna go to the penalty box you're going to have to take a check or a punch and give it right back. You have a goal, you keep your head up, you keep
keep after that goal, and eventually you win.